Hi, it's Elizabeth Brown, the Kitchen Vixen, and I'm kneeling in front of my refrigerator to answer the question, what does your refrigerator say about you? Because a refrigerator reflects a lot of what is going on inside of your body. So to help you answer that question, I'm going to share with you what's inside of my refrigerator and what I'm going to be stocking it with after I went to my grocery store. All right. So, I always have carrots in my refrigerator. They seem to be a staple in my diet, which is why they end up in a lot of my recipes. And so to use up my carrots, I have a plan. I'm gonna start making some carrot juice, which I love, but I'll probably mix it with some seasonal fruit, usually like an apple, something kind of neutral, maybe a little uh, lemon or parsley. And I also like to add some fresh ginger. So I bought some ginger to go with my carrot juice. And then last time we were talking about um, garbanzo beans, so I'm going to make a garbanzo bean salad for one of my next recipes, and I'll be adding some carrots to that. I like to shred carrots and keep them in a container so I can add them to recipes, or if I make a soup, I could add them to a soup, or if I do tuna salad, that's a great place to add those carrots. And then I'm also going to make, um, with, the, uh, with the garbanzo bean recipe, I'm going to be using some, some red peppers. So I picked up some more red peppers, and red peppers are one of those vegetables that are on that dirty dozen list that you want to make sure you get organic and the way to know if you're buying organic produce of course it should be labeled in the store but you look for that number see where there's a nine in the barcode that tells you that's that's organic just in case you're not certain and organic produce by the way is is better for you and it does taste better because it has it's not grown with pesticides so that's a good thing no none of those extra chemicals we don't want but food when it's grown without pesticides will develop more antioxidants which we think of as like being beneficial for us, which they are, but they're really the plant's defense system. So when a plant doesn't have any chemicals to help it out, you know, to help it survive in the environment, it has to develop its own defenses. And those defenses we in turn get as antioxidants that help us stay strong. And so along those lines, I've also bought some more produce. I got some nectarines, which are organic, and I bought some avocados, which are not organic, and I did find on that list that you don't have to buy organic avocados. And um, maybe it's because the skin is thicker, I'm not certain, but they, I guess they don't tend to accumulate as much pesticide, and they're harder to find. I wasn't able to find organic avocados at my store anyway. Um, along the lines of having things that help us fight diseases, I want to always have, um, or not, not just fighting disease, but preventing disease along the way, you know, giving myself some good rain food. I do try to buy some seafood. So seafood is high on omega-3s. Omega-3s are good for your brain. And so I bought some wild shrimp, which is not easy to find. It's you find more farm-raised shrimp. So you have to look, you have to ask. But because this shrimp I bought at the seafood counter, it is was frozen, so I have to use it within three days and you can't refreeze it. So keep that in mind. Um, because I tend to be a little anemic, I do eat more of a vegetarian diet, but not 100%. I'm, I'm definitely a flexitarian. So I did also buy some sliced red meat at the deli counter at Whole Foods, and I did ask them, they said not always, but sometimes their beef is grass-fed, so you have to just ask which one, and that way you can be sure that you're getting those animals that got to live on the grass, live a good life, and give you more benefit because they're eating those natural, their natural diet, and they're giving you those antioxidants back, and even more, um, they give you conjugated linoleic acid is one of them. I know with like grass-fed beef and even butter, you get glutathione, which is an antioxidant. You get superoxide dismutase, which is another antioxidant. They don't sound very helpful, actually, but they are. They're part of your body's own antioxidant defense system. So we can get those in our diet as well. And along those lines of getting some animal products, I have some eggs in my refrigerator already, so I'm going to use those first. But I restocked with my organic, my pasture-raised organic eggs. The pasture-raised is the key word, though, not the organic. You want to look for pasture-raised. And that means, and even I think it's even more prominent than free than free range pasturies, because that means that those chickens that are laying these eggs that we want, they live on natural grass. You know, they live outside. They get to eat bugs and worms and things that make them higher in nutrients like omega threes. They're higher in antioxidants like lutein and zeaxanthin, which we think of with our eye health. They're higher in choline and lecithin, which you think of with brain health. And they're higher again in those omega threes for your brain. And so the only way to get all that, though, is to eat the whole egg. You can't just eat the white. If you cut out the yolk, you cut out half the protein and all the nutrition. Plus, you get a natural source of vitamin D and a good source of vitamin A, which is an antioxidant as well. But to also get more vitamin A or carotenoids in your diet, eat things like sweet potatoes. And sweet potatoes were not on the list 
they were on the list of the clean 15. So you could eat them, um, you could get the non-organic, but then I saw this video of this little girl who was trying to grow sprouts from her potato and she showed us all how she grew these amazing sprouts when she bought the organic potato. So what does that tell you? I mean, I'm going to try to buy organic whenever I can for sure. Um, I bought some cherries. That is one you want to buy organic and cherries are rich in those great anthocyanins. So that's an antioxidant. And antioxidant is a very general term. Anthocyanin is a more classified term. And they come, anthocyanins come from things that are blue, purple, and red. So cyan, you hear the word cyan and anthocyanin. And those anthocyanins are very complex chemical structures and they are able to really squelch out free radicals. And free radicals are things like radical oxygen and pesticides and things that we're exposed to that come into our bodies and they try and rob our healthy cells of electrons. So these antioxidants come along and they donate an electron. They say, here, take my electron, I'll be fine. I'm here to save the day. And then they go about their business and then those free radicals are, oh, I'm okay, I'm not gonna do any harm now. So it's win-win. Get those antioxidants in your diet and save your body. And because I, I love anthocyanins, I love purple, blue is my favorite color actually, if you can't tell. Um, I try to get as many of those in my diet as I can. I love blueberries. And I love black rice bread. So I am gluten sensitive, not necessarily gluten intolerant because I don't have celiac disease. I have a sensitivity. Um, so I like this exotic gluten-free black rice bread from Food for Life. And you find it in the freezer section. And it's much denser than regular bread. But I really enjoy that almost every day with my eggs and greens, whatever I choose to eat in the morning. Um, it makes me feel good. I, I do miss bread. I don't eat pasta and things like that because I don't really enjoy that processed type of refined um, products. But I like the bread. It's, it's dense enough where I don't feel like it sends my blood sugar on a roller coaster. And so I also try to get greens every day. I have some leftover um, mescaline greens in my fridge and I'll probably just throw those in a smoothie because they're about done. And I'm restocking with some more of my mescaline greens and spinach. And I like these containers. I find, first of all, it's easier to buy this way. Um, I do repurpose them though because when I make things for people, like um, I'm, I'm going to make a soup actually out of some of my leftover produce and I have a friend that I've been promising I would make some lentil soup for him. He's taking care of his wife and I, he loves my soup. So when I do that, sometimes I'll put it, if I make a lot, I'll put it in a container like this, which of course it has to be cool and I know he's going to eat it right away. Or I put things in here like muffins or cookies or popcorn with nutritional yeast is a great thing to put in those containers. And then you don't have to worry about getting them back. So it's like you bought your produce and you got to reuse them and then you know hopefully you can tell the person what to do with it from there. Um, I bought some bok choy which is another version of a cruciferous vegetable like we get we think of cruciferous with kale and Brussels sprouts and broccoli and spin or not spinach um, cabbage and so you should get a cruciferous every day and that's another type of antioxidant in here um, your sulfur compounds so they help fight certain types of cancers and kale is great kale gets a lot of hype um, there is some debate about eating kale raw versus cooked like some certain nutrients are released more readily when you cook the kale so everyone's taking kale and throwing it in their smoothies and that's not always the best way to do it, so maybe next time we'll do a kale recipe. But for now, I'm going to eat my bok choy, saute it with my, maybe some onions, and eat it with either brown rice or quinoa or my gluten-free bread. And I also like to make sure I get some good fats in my diet, so I do use butter sometimes. I love the taste of butter, and I found this Strauss Family Farm, it's um. Their cows are grass-fed, so it's a good it's a good choice. But I know there are other products out there. I think Kerrygold is one of them. So you want to look for if you buy butter, look for the butter where the cows have been grass-fed. They get to roam around, and all you have to do is buy one of these and then buy some other generic type of butter and compare them, and you'll see there is no there's no comparison. This is going to be bright yellow, and the other stuff's going to be white. So I like butter. I like grass-fed butter, and I use that in moderation. Um, I also though. Again, just like with the avocados, I believe in getting fats from whole food sources. And I love olive oil. I do use a little bit of olive oil for sauteing as well. But I love olives. So when I want to snack, sometimes I'll just eat a couple olives and maybe munch on some vegetables. And it's very satisfying. Um, I don't eat a lot of animal products aside from my eggs and a little bit of seafood or a little bit of beef every once in a while. So to get protein in my diet, 
I do, I love cottage cheese and I love Greek yogurt. So I mix the two because I like the consistency better. And then to that I'll usually add some of my fresh seasonal fruit and maybe my flax and chia seeds or some nuts. And I have some flax and chia seeds here and I have some of my other fats as well because you need to have a variety of fat in your diet. But these are some of the best, your flax and chia and your, your seafood. Those give you those omega-3s. That There's been so much research done on omega-3s. If you're not aware by now, you need to just you know look around you. But it's, it's very well known that omega-3s, they get into your brain and they affect your brain health. There's DHA in particular, which comes from seafood. But any type of omega-3 is going to possibly be converted to that beneficial type of fat. So that can help with brain health, help maybe help with memory, maybe help with prevention of certain types of age-related diseases, definitely helps eye health, and it helps with performance because those fats, those omega-3 fats, get incorporated into cell membranes, and every cell in your body is, has a membrane that's made of fat, and that fat plays a role in how things get passed in and out of the cell, whether it's nutrition, getting in there, nutrients, or whether it's keeping bad things out. We want to keep those cells healthy. And along those lines, I am going to try some coconut oil because it's been so hyped. Um, but as far as coconut oil is concerned, I've looked at some research, and the research on weight loss was done with medium chain triglyceride or MCT oil, not coconut oil. And they did show four pound weight loss over four months greater for the people that use MCT oil. MCT oil is all MCTs, it's all medium chain triglycerides. Coconut oil is 60% MCT, so it's not all of the same type of fat. They're kind of um, extrapolating the research and, and applying it to one product to, to um, increase sales. So with just coconut oil alone, there was one study that looked at, you know, people, they, they, had, they added either coconut oil or soybean oil. They increased their activity. They decreased their calories equally across the board, and there was no difference in weight loss. So it's up to you as far as why they believe it may help with weight loss is because the MCTs, they don't get absorbed the same way as other fats in the diet. So MCT means this is a shorter chain, like 12 carbon units, so it's shorter chain length. And that means that it gets to go right into the body, into the liver, and it gets converted to immediate energy, generally in the form of what's called a ketone. Um, and now I'm gonna forget the name, but so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna type it up here later on. But this keto, this keto acid, which we think of ketones in association with when people are on a low carbohydrate diet, they produce ketones. So ketones do have some benefit for weight loss. So therefore, if we make ketones, we will lose weight because it increases the metabolism a little bit. And those ketones in relationship to memory and Alzheimer's prevention, ketones can go to the brain and be used as a fuel source for the brain. They say that Alzheimer's disease is like a type three diabetes where your body is not using insulin like it used to, and so glucose isn't getting into the brain cells as quickly as it used to. There's like a, an insulin resistance like we see with type 2 diabetes. And I'm a diabetes educator, so this is something I've talked about before, but not necessarily the Alzheimer's correlation is new to me. Um, so it, they believe that if you can increase your ketones in the diet, then you don't rely on that insulin resistance. You know, you're not relying on insulin and glucose to get fuel into your brain. So there's a correlation, but it hasn't been proven. And one woman took that correlation and she kind of ran with it. So it's still not proven and it sounds good in theory, but when you eat a regular diet, you are still getting glucose, so you are still using your insulin. Um, so I don't know that it's, it's the end all be all to Alzheimer's prevention and all the Alzheimer's websites don't, don't necessarily tout it. They, they give the research and they say, you know, we still need to look at it more. And again, getting back to whole foods though, when you eat your, your vegetables with with skin and your fruit with skin and your nuts and seeds and particularly like flax seed and chia seeds you get good types of fiber that goes into your digestive tract that actually feeds your little microflora and those little bacteria in your GI tract they produce some of that same some of the same essential fatty acids or not essential those little ketone fatty acids that may help with brain health so there is always other ways to increase Good things in your body without relying on just one food. If somebody says there's this one food, it's the magic bullet, you have to question it. My refrigerator is not full of coconut oil and coconut oil products. I'm going to try it, but you know, that's not the magic bullet. It's a combination of all of these things. And, and I also have some soy milk because I used to do dairy milk, but I find that it, 
it bothers my sinuses and that is my anecdotal experience. I'm not saying that's everyone's experience. Um, I don't find that almond milk is as nutritious as everyone like would believe it could be because it doesn't have protein. It has vitamin E, which is great. We need vitamin E. It's a good antioxidant. But soy milk has protein and it has those great phytoestrogens and we get some of those similar types of phytoestrogens from our flax seeds. They're called lignins. And in soy milk, they're called, they're called, oh, I'm forgetting. So in soy milk, those are phytoestrogens and their, their lignans are a particular type that we get from our flax seed. But they might help to fight certain types of estrogen related cancers by blocking the receptor sites on cells where we're prone to cancer. So estrogen may cause cancer, but the, the phytoestrogens bind and block it and say, okay, cancer, there's no place for you to bind and cause cancer. So there is some benefit there. And to get my vitamin E, I also, you know, because I don't rely on, on milk, and, and vitamin E isn't actually super easy to get in your diet, but I love almond butter. I love raw almond butter, and it is more expensive, but I love the taste of it, and it's just my preferred source, but this is another thing I buy as a staple. And also in the relationship of memory and Alzheimer's prevention, coconut oil didn't show a favorable result, but you know what did? Coffee. And I'm not a big coffee drinker. I'm not a Starbucks person or even coffee bean. I like, I really like instant coffee. And so when I was a private chef for the owner of Seven Jeans, all the servants in the house, they used to buy this organic coffee. And so this is what I prefer with my soy milk in the morning. And there, there is good research to show that higher caffeine levels can actually reduce your incidence of Alzheimer's. So there you go. And you know what else does? Having a purpose in life. And so my purpose is to help educate people about what good foods are out there and what to do with them. And they say that, you know, when you have a purpose in life, even if it's not prevention of Alzheimer's, it gives you something to look forward to every day. So that's why I'm going to do this, try and make videos and educate you and share my information. And most of all, I want you to think about what does your refrigerator say about you? I told you what mine says. It's part of my purpose, giving myself good energy and sharing that energy with you. So thank you so much for listening. I'm Elizabeth Brown, the Kitchen Vixen, and I'll see you next time.